Okay, so what I want to do today is show you how to not only add labels to your map, which most of you know how to do, but also how to shape and space and arrange your labels on a complicated map in ArcMap. All right, so let's let's get started. What I have here is a, a base map of the Caribbean, and um, I've got all of this all of this data came from Natural Earth. But let's turn some more data on, because before we start labeling places, it's good to actually um, know what we'll have to be contending with. So I downloaded country provinces of the Caribbean from the 1 to 10 million scale natural earth data set. The rest of the data, well, most of the data came from the 1 to 50 million scale, but they have the provinces for all the countries in the world if you get the 1 to 10 million. And I just thought that might be a nice touch. It might make it too busy, we'll see, but I thought I'd add it to the data set. I also added cities from the 1 to 10 million natural earth data set because there are more cities in that data set. And then I used a filter, basically a query, to pick only capital cities as well as cities that I think that have more than 25,000 people or something. So I did that. I cropped the data so that it doesn't go globally, um, speeds it up a bit, and I think we're ready to go here. So in this tutorial, what I want to do is uh, I'd like to show you how to label countries and then tweak those labels so that they fill the area of the country that's being labeled. So the first thing we have to do naturally is go to Properties. Labels. I move this. wish I move this so you guys can see what's going on. Move it up here, I guess. And we're going to, yep, use name as the label. We want to label all the countries pretty much the same way. They can be different sized fonts depending on how big they are. There's no hard and fast rule there. And then, of course, we don't want a generic, boring font. We probably want these to be a little bit bigger, so I'll go size 12. We don't want them to dominate our map, so we'll go with, uh, maybe we'll start with this gray 30%. Now, let's go to symbol. Um, this is where it gets a little confusing. So we have what we just selected, etc., etc. If we go to edit symbol here, we can change a bunch of things. And again, it's mostly what we just saw, blah, blah, blah. But if you go to formatted text, we can hit small caps, which will be good. It will differentiate our... our uh, countries from city names because we won't do cities in all caps. All right, so let's hit OK. Placement properties. Always straight means like this, always horizontal. Doesn't really matter right now. If you type this, you're going to be in trouble because most of your labels won't fit inside of the islands. So you don't want to do that. But you do want to do this. Uh, place one label per feature because a lot of these Countries have about a thousand islands, and you might get a thousand labels if you don't do that. Let's hit OK. Let's hit Apply. OK. Um, oh, let's hit Label Features and Layer. Hit Apply. And there we go. We have our labels. Notice the country labels are largely falling to the back, which is generally what we want. We may want to pop them out a little more than that, and we can always change the font color later. All right, once you have the countries labeled or what, what labeled what you want to have labeled, this is where it gets interesting. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to right click over the layer and we're going to go to convert labels to annotation. And then we're going to click store annotation in the map, keep all features, doesn't really matter what you call it. Um, and we'll hit convert. All right, so we've got these all labeled now, and now they're annotated. What this means is you can click on the arrow here, the black arrow, and you should be able to select them. And when you do, there is a little dashed blue box around them. What you'll need to do now is go up to toolbars, customize toolbars, and make sure the draw toolbar is on. The draw toolbar is where we can start manipulating text um, pretty effectively in ArcMap. So what I'm going to do, I guess, here is I want to mess with Cuba. And I want Cuba to line up 
pretty much in this area of Cuba, spread it out, and kind of go around these cities that are in the middle of the country. So the first thing you do is you click on, you have the name of the place you're going to annotate or edit selected. You click on Edit Vertices, which is always just to the left of the font, or excuse me, the type being used. When you do that, what you'll see Let's go back here. You will see a red line with two blue points. If you right click over this red line, you can hit Add Vertex. And it adds a bunch of nodes, just like you would have in Illustrator with the pen tool. And what we can do now is start dragging these puppies as we see fit. Notice that they do have Bezier curves as well. So Beziers aren't only for Adobe Illustrator. So we will do this. And we can click this up here. And we can move the Bezier handles a bit to get this groovy. All right, Cuba, looking better. Here's the problem, of course, if I go back to the previous extent, it's not really spread out. We can click on this arrow tool to just move the name a little bit. And we can also rotate it as we see fit. I'll zoom in again, this is kind of small. Right click over this and go to properties. And under text, there's character spacing. So let's type in 300. And it should follow the Bezier lines that you created. That's pretty good. With Cuba, we're not going to be able to get the two times the letter spacing rule. It's too long and narrow. But what we should be able to do is move this around the city names. And there we go. Cuba is done. And as you'll see, it looks much better. Well, at least it looks more organic and more professional. So this is how you basically tweak type in ArcMap. It's not the most straightforward thing. You can do it in Illustrator too. Sometimes I find that it's easier just to print a labeled map that I created in ArcMap, delete all the labels, export it to Illustrator, and go in Illustrator and just type the stuff manually because you have a little bit more control. But it takes a while as well. Anyway, this is how you manipulate type and have fun. Thanks.